A critical hearing underway right now for the confessed Oxford High School shooter. And new today, we're seeing some dramatic and disturbing video from the day the teen was arrested. We're live with that story coming up. And new this morning, we're getting an update on the health of Detroit community activist Malik Shabazz, what his family is saying after he suffered a heart attack just a few weeks ago. Working for you. Fox 2 News Live at 11 starts now. Its presence is sorely missed in this community, especially at this time, but we'll have much more on that coming up. But first, good morning. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday, August 1st. August 1st. Already? Yeah, here we go. I'm Brandon Hudson. And I'm Amy Lang. Five cities are under a boil water advisory following several large water main breaks in Macomb County. This is not the best way to start the day for anyone who is mm -hmm. heading to work. Uh, this is causing service disruption for many homes. Fox News' Robin Murdoch is live at the scene. Robin, uh, do we know why this happened? or when service may be restored. Well, they're still trying to figure out the why and when in this situation, Brandon and Amy. Right now, it's unclear exactly when this entire situation will be resolved. But you can see there are a number of workers behind me trying to resolve this situation as quickly as possible because they want to get this taken care of. They understand what a burden this is for many people. In the meantime, as you can imagine, water, it is flying off of store shelves. When I woke up this morning, the, it, there was this, just a trickle of water coming out of my faucet. This woman is among the Macomb County residents who had little to no water pressure on Tuesday morning, then went right to the nearest store to stock up on the staples. Sky Fox flew over this massive water main break at 24 Mile and North Road, which is believed to be part of the pressure problem. It is a headache, um, but I worry more about my neighbors that are around me because they're older, so I picked up some water for them. Those living in five surrounding communities are now being asked to boil their water out of an abundance of caution. A pressure drop, we are told, can lead to bacterial contamination in the water system. Residents are advised to boil their water for at least a minute then let it cool. Boiled or bottled water should be used in drinking, making ice, washing dishes, and preparing food until further notice. Well, I went to the just the one store at Meyer at 23 and Gratiot, but as soon as I walked in, he said, we're out of water. <laughs> So I called work and I said, well, try BJ's. They usually have more anyway. Crews from the Great Lakes Water Authority are now working to isolate and investigate this bothersome break so it can be repaired and the water pressure restored to communities like Macomb and Chesterfield Townships and beyond. Until that happens, though, area stores will be a popular place and bottled water the most popular item on many shopping lists. It's, uh, it's not worth getting upset about. You know, life goes on. Again, that boil water advisory, it is in effect for five different communities. And those five communities are Chesterfield Township, Macomb Township, Lenox Township, New Haven, as well as parts of Rochester. And we are told that it will remain in effect until tests come back, showing that the drinking water is completely safe. We are live here in Macomb County. I'm Robin Murdoch for Fox 2 News. Hey, Robin, you heard the last guy you spoke to say this is no big deal, but I remember something similar to this happening last year in a number of uh, surrounding towns uh, in a different county. But uh, we've covered these things before. How much of a burden is it when you lose your water, especially when you have to go to work or have to go somewhere and get out of the house? Yeah, a lot of people we talked to, Brandon, actually talked about the last time something like this happened and what a huge headache it was. I did talk to one woman who has five people living in her household, so as you can imagine, that's a lot of bottled water, a lot of boiled water to go through. And then I talked to another woman who actually works at a hospital, so she needs to take showers after her shift to make sure that she is not bringing anything home. So again, this is a big inconvenience to a lot of people and one that they hope will be over relatively quickly. Back to you, Brandon. Robin, we appreciate it. Thank you for your report. Have a good one. Amy. Mm -hmm. New this morning, fire breaking out, forcing the evacuation of residents at the Pallister Apartments in Midtown Detroit. We're told at least three people were treated for smoke inhalation. A neighbor says he could hear a woman screaming for help. He says he and a maintenance worker quickly moved into action. First of all, if we didn't make it in time for the fire not to spread, it would have been chaotic. It would have been disastrous. 
especially if she would have had the top lock or something on her door, it would have been crazy because we couldn't get in at that point. But we got in there because the bomb lock was only on. But we was trying to fill up buckets of water at a time. I was like, no, nah, let's get this water hose so we can go ahead and put this water out. And then that's how we got in there. Pretty brave to jump into action like that. Right now, it appears the fire was contained to the one unit. According to DFD Chief Harris, the fire was started by an electrical malfunction. And there's another fire. This one was in Oakland County as crews raced from numerous fire departments to put out the flames at a home. I want you to check out the smoke that is rising from this home on Marconi Street in Independence Township. Uh, the calls for help came in around 6 this morning. You can kind of see in that faint glimmer of smoke uh, some roof damage there. We're working to find out if anyone was home at the time. And we're following developing news from Detroit's west side where a man was shot and killed. Police surrounding a home on Sussex Street near Southfield and Grand River earlier this morning. The victim, a 41-year-old man, it's not clear what led up to the shooting police are investigating. There's a big story that we we're following from yesterday. Two Detroit police officers arrested, charged, and suspended. The two suspects accused of separate felonies and both alleged incidents happening while they were off duty. Here's Fox 2's Camila Mary. The alleged conduct is certainly disturbing. Uh, you know, we are held to a higher standard, plain and simple. Detroit Police Chief James White announcing he has suspended two of his officers, both arrested and charged with felonies last week in two completely separate incidents. A male officer who has been a member of the Detroit Police Department for five years arrested in Woodhaven for criminal sexual conduct. The crime allegedly happened on July 27th. Investigators not revealing a lot about the case. Sources confirming to Fox 2 that the officer is 32-year-old David Apperson. Investigators do confirm that the victim was not a minor. I can only tell you uh, that it was an action that occurred off duty, that there are no other uh, victims involved in this. There's only one victim. Uh, this is not a, a predator situation. This isn't uh, any members of the department nor city of Detroit residents are at risk. The second incident happened on Saturday in Madison Heights. A veteran female DPD officer with 26 years of experience with the force arrested for felonious assault in what authorities are calling a road rage incident. There was some type of altercation between the officer off duty uh, in their personal vehicle, not in a police car, in a uh, civilian attire, not in uniform, uh, where um, there was an interaction with the other party, uh, the victim in this case, uh, and uh, her weapon uh, was pointed at, at the suspect or at the uh, victim at that time. The female officer, most recently a member of DPD's tactical operations. Apperson, most recently, was assigned to the third precinct. I have reviewed the information that we've been provided. Uh, I've looked at it and I've seen enough there uh, to give me uh, some very serious concern about the conduct uh, of these two officers. Camille Mary, Fox 2 News. In Oakland County, a key hearing continues today involving the confessed Oxford school shooter. The now 17-year-old could be eligible for life in prison without parole, but state law requires this hearing be held due to a previous court ruling banning automatic life sentences for minors. The shooter pleaded guilty to killing four students and injuring seven other people during the rampage two years ago. It's the third day for the hearing and is expected to wrap up today, but the judge does not have to make an immediate ruling. Yes, yeah, some very dramatic, and we want to warn you, some very disturbing video being played in court this morning. That's where Fox 2's Charlie Langton is covering the hearing. He joins us now live with more. Good morning, Charlie. Well, good morning, Amy. Yes, last week was very emotional testimony, but today, going on right now here at the Oakland County Courthouse, more emotional testimony. Now, the defense is really putting on his case, and for the first time, they called a witness that actually told, talked about how Ethan, how the shooter, the actor shooter, grew up. They called Dr. Colin King. He is a clinical psychologist. He got his degree from Wayne State University, but he basically testified that the shooter was abandoned by his parents at about age six, that he uh, fantasized about killing, basically from watching Grand Theft Auto. His dog had died that he had to bury at the same place where he earlier tortured a bird, and that his best and maybe only friend left only about a month before the shooting. Now that's bad enough. Again, one of the Miller factors is the defendant's home life and how it affects his age and maturity. 
But what is crucial in this case is a video that was played by the defense taken while he was in custody. And you can tell that it really supports the diagnosis of mental illness. We're going to show the video, but be careful. This is the shooter as he's being held after the shooting. Take a look. Uh, very shocking testimony. That is a video that uh, a lot of the victims who are packed the courtroom yet again today on day three had not seen before. We really hadn't, we hadn't known about any type of evidence about uh, the shooter as he reacted after he kind of kind of settled into what exactly happened. Now there's five Miller factors and the judges have to make a decision as to whether or not he should get he should get life in prison or a term of years, some kind of pr chance for parole. But one of the factors though is the uh, defendant's age, his maturity, uh, his diagnosis, and he was diagnosed with being very severely mentally ill, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, depression. There are some other diagnoses, but that tape, that video, seemed to send some shockwaves through the victims, just showing the, the state of depression and mental illness that this particular defendant had. Now, just a couple of moments ago, the prosecution is cross-examining the witness, Dr. Colin King, the clinical psychologist. So uh, they're, uh, obviously they may challenge some of the findings from the doctor. The doctor did, however, say that despite the fact that this shooter's mental illness was severe, he is capable about being rehabilitated. It may take 10 years but he is capable of being rehabilitated. Yet another Miller factor that the judge will have to continue. This hearing hopefully will be concluded today. I would think it would be, although we don't know. The prosecutor can also put on other witnesses after the defense finishes, and they're not done yet. I'm live in the Oakland County Courthouse. I'll send it back to you. Charlie, we mentioned um, in, you know, going to you a few minutes ago, and yes, that was incredibly disturbing. I don't think anyone questions, uh, you know, the, the mental illness or the abandonment. Uh, you know, that story is, is very clear for this shooter. Um, as far as the judge, though, obviously a very challenging situation for this decision making. How long could that take? If this wraps today, Unlikely, would you say, that the judge would go ahead and have an immediate decision? Very unlikely. He's going to have to make a he's going to have to make a written ruling uh, because obviously this will be the subject of uh, of appeal, and I would imagine that this will be appealed no matter how the judge rules, uh, whichever the way the judge rules. One interesting factor, though, this particular witness for the first I think it's the first witness called by the defense. He actually sat down and talked to the shooter. Actually had one-on-one -on -one meetings about six of them, if I remember correctly, um, in the courthouse uh, in the jail rather, and so he did get a picture of the the extents of the uh, this defendant's background his upbringing and he could see the mental illness and then he reviewed all of the text messages going back and forth about how he was reaching out and he's provided pretty much answers to at least the questions that we wanted to know is how could someone such a young age do this of a better than average intelligence. Uh, he is not a, a dumb kid by any means, but what he's doing is when he tortured the bird, according to this doctor that testified, is that he was really challenging, he was really telegraphing to people how he was feeling inside, how the hurt he was. And one of the other issues that came out here is that besides the abandonment by the parents, uh, the lack of friends, the Oxford school system, according to this witness now, only had one counselor for every thousand students, the norm is about one for every 250. So even if he wanted counseling, it was unlikely that he would get it. Difficult case, no doubt about it. Very troubling, very troubling. So many people failed him and systems failed him yeah. all around. Thank you so much, Charlie Linkton. We really appreciate you and we'll be watching for your reports later today.